Poster presentations are formal research presentations, but are more conversational than other types of oral presentations. Researchers engage their audience in a more personal, face-to-face -face manner. There are three important elements to consider for any poster presentation. Developing your content, designing your poster, and presenting your poster. First, you'll need to decide on the content for your poster. You won't be able to include all of your material on your poster, so you'll have to decide what is most important. If you include charts, graphs, or other visuals, they should be clear, easy to decipher, and well-labeled. They should be well integrated and should support the main points of your poster. If there is content you'd like to include that doesn't fit, you can make a handout or a brochure where you can feature information like your abstract, citations, and your contact info. Next, you'll need to consider the layout and design of your poster. There will be requirements about the physical size of your poster. Most researcher posters presented at meetings or conferences are 32 inches by 40 inches and can be oriented horizontally or vertically. That is, landscape or portrait style. You'll also need to think about readability. Because you want people who walk by your poster to be able to read it, it's important that your poster is legible from about 10 feet away. A good general rule is to use at least 20 point font. Dark text on a light background is the most legible, but don't feel restricted to black and white. Adding color draws visual interest and can make your poster stand out. Because most people you interact with won't have or take the time to read through large blocks of text, use bullet points and break up text into short, manageable sections whenever possible. Here's an example of a basic poster layout. You can see that each of these examples share some similar features. All of the examples include the poster title and the presenter's name. Sometimes poster authors include the name of or logo for the research office where they work, and sometimes they include acknowledgments. Each poster has a section devoted to including text, typically using headings and bullet points, and each poster includes some graphics or visuals. These are just quick and general poster layouts. You'll definitely want to take a look at some actual poster examples as you're working on your own poster. Now that you've designed an attractive and intelligent poster, you've done half the work. The next step is nailing your presentation. You'll need to know who your audience is, which depends on where you're presenting your poster. Your audience might be scholars and researchers in your field who will understand complex jargon. On the other hand, you might have a more general audience, one that understands research approaches generally, but may not know your field well. You'll want to use language and jargon as appropriate to your audience. It's a good idea to have a quick pitch prepared. A quick two to three sentence statement can provide an overview of your research and help break the ice with viewers. Talk to the person, not your poster. This means eye contact and not just reading the text on your poster. The poster should be there to supplement your information. Use highlighted information to encourage deeper discussions. Reference your poster and make the most interesting parts of your research stand out. Finally, don't forget to thank people who stop by and talk to you. You can find more research-related advice, tools, and resources at the MSU Undergraduate Research website, urca.msu.edu.